Here are the numbers that have died every year. You go back to 1998, you see it's consistently between 300 and 400, 300 400, 300 400. Suddenly, 2021, what happens? You get in office, and that red line are dead bodies. I've been on the Rio Grande, and I've seen dead bodies floating there who've drowned. You don't even know how many have died. What do you say to the Texas farmers and ranchers who find pregnant ladies dead on their property, who find toddlers dead on their property? What do you say to them? Mr. Secretary, you have just testified to the American people you're incompetent at your job. You have turned these cartels into multi-billion dollar criminal organizations, and these are modern day leg irons, because these are children being sold into sex slavery, and you don't even know what they are. That is astonishing. Good morning, Secretary Mayorkas. Good morning. Is there a crisis at our southern border? Senator? Uh, there is a very significant. So that, that's a yes or no question. There's a very significant. Is there a crisis? Senator, there's a very significant I, challenge. I think your microphone is not on. There is a very significant challenge that we are facing. Yes or no, the is there border. a crisis? I believe I've addressed that question. So Senator. you're refusing to answer? Senator, uh, there is a very significant challenge. and we Will you are answer therefore, if there's a crisis? Therefore, we are dedicating the resources. Okay, so you're refusing to we answer. Well, Secretary Mayorkas, I'll tell you someone who is willing to answer, which is your and President Biden's chief of the Border Patrol, in a sworn deposition in July of 2022, when asked, would you agree, Chief Ortiz, that the southern border is currently in crisis? Answer, yes. Notice none of those wiggle words, none of that equivocation. One word, one syllable, yes. Are you willing to speak with the same clarity as Chief Ortiz? Is there a crisis at our southern border, yes or no? Senator, I'm very proud to work alongside. But you refuse to answer. Let me ask you the next question. Has the crisis at our southern border made Americans less safe, yes or no? Senator, we are dedicated to the safety Has and the security. Has the crisis made Americans less uh, safe? I don't, I don't want a, a discourse. It's a yes or no question. Senator, we have a challenge of You refuse to answer the question. Not Se Mr. Secretary, let me show you how someone doing his job answers a question in a straightforward manner. Chief Ortiz, is the crisis that is currently ongoing at the southern border making the border less safe for Americans and aliens alike? Answer, yes. One word, one syllable, three letters. That's how someone answers a question and does their job. You're being a politician misleading the American people. Let me give you a chance again. Will you show the same integrity Chief Ortiz shows? Is the crisis at the southern border making Americans less safe? Yes or no? Senator, we have 260,000 You refuse to answer the question. Let's move on. And security of the Next American question, people. Mr. Mayorkas. Has the crisis made aliens less safe? Yes or no? Senator, we are seeking... So you won't answer that question either? If you... It, it is... It's a yes or no. Has it made aliens less safe? Senator, smugglers are exploiting... Has the crisis by... made aliens, yes, less safe? Are you willing to answer it? Senator, the smuggling organizations... Okay, you're, you're filibustering ex... again. Let me ask you this question. How many migrants have died under President Biden? Senator, your, your phrasing of the question is actually quite misleading. How many migrants died in 2022? Um, uh, at our, uh, approaching our southern border? Yes. Precisely why we are seeking to exclude so you're, the can, Do you know the answer? Do you know how many died? I do not. You do not. Of course you don't. I know how many died. 853. That is 853. And by the way, here are the numbers that have died every year. You go back to 1998, you see it's consistently between 300 and 400, 300 400, 300 400. Suddenly, 2021, what happens? You get in office, and that red line are dead bodies. I've been on the Rio Grande, and I've seen dead bodies floating there who've drowned because of your refusal to do your job. You don't even know how many have died. What do you say to the Texas farmers and ranchers who find pregnant ladies dead on their property, who find toddlers dead on their property? What do you say to them? I say that is why precisely we are taking it to the smuggling organization. But you are not. Number, that is simply not true. Number two, it is but, why let, we let, are let, let, let me read from the Wall Street Journal. The Wall Street Journal two weeks ago ran an article entitled, It's Like Gra a Graveyard. Record numbers of migrants are dying at the border. The story begins with this chilling line, quote, Eagle Pass, Texas. Local officials keep a refrigerated truck to hold the bodies of migrants who drown in the currents of the Rio Grande while trying to cross the border into the U.S. 
Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent that this article be entered into the re record. Let me ask you a different question. How many children have been sexually assaulted by human traffickers under the Biden administration? Senator, this is precisely why we instituted- I, I don't want Jack a lecture. It's a question. How many children I'm have been sexually assaulted by human traffickers under your administration? Senator, this is, uh, this is exactly why on January 5th, we announced you, again, the parole Again, do you know program. how many? Do you know how many children have been sexually assaulted? This is why we- Okay, you're gonna refuse to answer that question as well. Let's move on. It's obvious you've been instructed to stonewall, so Thank I'm not gonna let you. You don't get to stonewall and filibuster. Now, one of my Democratic colleagues before said the Democrat talking point, quote, this problem didn't start under Biden. That's, I, look, I get if you're a partisan spinner, you gotta figure out something to say about the absolute catastrophe that has played out under the Biden administration. True or false, Secretary Morricus, 2020 was the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years. Is that true or false? It is certainly the lowest level of immigration in many, many years. And what was it okay, fine. in 2020? What was it, Senator, in 2020 that impacted the entire world, including the United States? Okay, so your what testimony is the reason we had the lowest rate was COVID. It had nothing to do with building the wall, nothing to do with any catch and release, nothing to do with remain in Mexico. With all respect, Mr. Secretary, that answer is laughable. And in fact, if you look at illegal immigration, let's look at CBP encounters. You can see 500,000, 500,000, it drops to the lowest level and boom, what happens? You show up and that red line is you. That red line is Joe Biden. And you're claiming nothing happened. Oh gosh, th this was here before us. No, you made the decision to allow this to happen. Let me ask you, we now have over 5.5 million people who've entered this country illegally under Joe Biden. How many murderers have you released into America? Senator, I'm not aware of any murder whom we've- So you don't know. Into the, into, Senator, let me say something. If you, Do you know? If you take a look at- No, no, you, you don't get to give a speech. Do you know how many murderers I'm just you've released? To, I'm just trying to answer your question, How many Senator. rapists have you released? Senator, I'm trying Do you to know? answer your question. You can answer, I know or I don't know. Senator, any individual who poses a public safety threat- How many child molesters have you released? And removed into the United States, from the United States. Oh, so your testimony under oath, subject to perjury, is that you have not released any murderers, rapists, or child molesters among the 5.5 million? Is that your testimony? Um, Mr. Chairman, may I have the opportunity no, to- No, you act? may not. You may answer my question. You're, n you're not Is allowing. that your testimony, yes or no? Senator, you're not allowing me to answer your question. I am allowing you to answer. I'm not allowing you to filibuster. If, if you take a look at the, the pace of immigration in 2018 to 2019- You're refusing you to answer. Let's panic. move on. Let's you move on to gotaways. Gotaways are the people that get away that you know about. Now, what happened under your administration? Gotaways consistently down at this low line. Boom, you get in. And they go from below 180,000 to 600,000. Now, I'll tell you this about a gotaway. You don't know among those 600,000 a year, you have no idea how many mur are murderers, correct? That is precisely why the correct. number of gotaways. Do you know how many of those are murderers? That is precisely why. So you why refuse to answer the question. You know how many are rapists? Do you know how many are rapists? This is a question. You're a lawyer. You know how to answer questions. Of the 600,000, do you know how many of them were rapists? Senator, this is why we So again, are... the answer is no. Let me ask you this. Do you know how many of them are terrorists? And I don't want to, Senator, here's my lecture on this. Do you know how many of the 600,000 gotaways were terrorists? Yes or no? Senator, we are focused on the You refuse to answer that as well. What's the result of massive gotaways? Well, one of the results is drug overdoses. And we now have, last year, over 100,000 overdoses who died, the majority from Chinese fentanyl streaming across the border. Now, you told Senator Cornyn, you care, but look what has happened under your policy. When you open up the border to the worst illegal immigration in our nation's history, people die. You claim you care, Mr. Secretary, that is a lie. You know, some months ago, Corrine Jean-Pierre stood up at a White House briefing and said, people are not just walking across the border. Was she telling the truth? Senator, you are 
Was she telling so the truth? So profoundly disrespectful. Was she telling the truth? Two years. Okay, of you, you, you get to answer questions. You don't Senator, get to give speeches. Senator, I served as a federal prosecutor. All right, for you're refusing years. to answer. If you look at, she was lying, and she was not lying on her own. She was lying on behalf of the president of the United States. Now, uh, the photograph of people walking. She was lying on behalf of the President of the United States. This is a photograph from just one day along the Rio Grande of hundreds of thousands of people walking across the border. You have allowed this to happen. The photograph that was before, what are, what are these wristbands? I don't know what they are. You don't, don't know. know what they are. Mr. Secretary, you have just testified to the American people you're incompetent at your job because I've been to the southern border. And if you go to the southern border, along the southern border, you see thousands of these wristbands because the illegal immigrants wear them. The drug cartels, every color corresponds to how many thousands of dollars they owe the cartels. You have turned these cartels into multi-billion dollar criminal organizations. And these are modern day leg irons because these are children being sold into sex slavery and you don't even know what they are. That is astonishing. Mr. Secretary, how many children have been sold into sex slavery under your administration? Senator, we are taking it to the cartel. How many children have been sold into sex slavery? In an Do you know how many children have been sold into sex slavery? To an unprecedented degree. Mr. Secretary, I want to say to you right now, it is your behavior is disgraceful, and the deaths, the children assaulted, the children raped, they are at your feet, and if you had integrity, you would resign. And I will tell you, the men and women of the Border Patrol, they've never had a political leader undermine them. They despise you, Mr. Secretary, because you're willing to let children be raped to follow political orders. This is a crisis. It's a disgrace. And you won't even admit this human tragedy is a crisis. Senator Hawley. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Secretary, thank you for being here. Let me start with what I hope is a simple question. Do we need to have more or fewer people coming to our southern border? Uh, Senator, Senator, we are working on diminishing the number of people whom we encounter at our southern border because of the challenge it presents. We're trying to build lawful, safe, and orderly pathways okay. to accomplish that. Okay, fewer. So we need to have fewer, which means we need to roll back incentives to come. So I, I, would, have, I would have thought that would have been the answer. Let's talk about what you're doing, though. In January of this year, you rolled out a new phone app called CBP-1, an app for a cell phone. I've got a picture of it behind me here. This phone app allows, and I'm going to quote from your own fact sheet, it allows, and I quote, non-citizens without appropriate documents for admission to schedule an appointment to come to the border. They can now go on their phone and schedule a time to come to the border and then be admitted. And you identified seven separate border points of entry where they could come. Five of them in Texas, two of them in California, one in Arizona. It's like a concierge service for illegal immigrants. My question is, you didn't think the border crisis was bad enough that now we're going to have an app that allows illegals to schedule their appointments and come and be admitted to this country? Uh, Senator, you're mischaracterizing the use of the application. Let me, let me explain it to you. Uh, we are currently enforcing the public health order of Title 42, and I know you're very familiar with it. There is a process for individuals who claim an exception to the Title 42 expulsion authority because of an acute medical uh, uh, condition. Well, let's talk uh, about this urgent, app. If I, if I may finish, an urgent, um, um, an urgent humanitarian reason. So f instead of them coming in between the ports of entry to claim that urgent medical condition, that extraordinarily um, uh, acute humanitarian cause, we allow a limited number to arrive at our ports of entry and seek the emergency relief that they need. Schedule, you, you allow them, let's, let's, be, let, let, let's be particular about and what I you do. I should say you that the CBP-1 app 
was not uh, unveiled for the first time on January 5th of this year. Oh, oh no, but you changed it. You made it available on January 5th to the illegals themselves. You don't have to be a lawyer to use it. You don't have to be a member of a non-governmental organization. Anybody can download the app and use it on their phone. And for the first time, you allowed them to schedule appointments. Now, let's talk about what actually happens when they come to the border. It's interesting. You characterized this when you rolled it out as an application for applying for asylum. But... Nowhere on the app do you actually require the illegal migrants to apply for asylum or to claim asylum or anything about asylum. And in fact, when they then get to the border, you don't ask them questions, you don't do interviews, you just release them. Here's the Texas Monthly, not a notable conservative outlet, who reports, and I quote, at no point does the app ask users, are you seeking asylum? Those arriving for the CBP-1 appointments are given no interviews, asked no questions about vulnerabilities that they may or may not have listed in the app or about why they're coming to the United States. They're simply released into the country, end quote. So rather than building a wall, Mr. Secretary, you have built Ticketmaster for illegal immigrants. You are, um, Senator, you are conflating programs. Let me, let me explain well, just, to just you. respond to this. Is it true that they are given no interviews, asked no questions, and simply released into the country? Let me explain to you what we announced on January 5th. No, no I want you to explain but, to me what's happening. I, I know what you oh, announced. So, I read it to you. So I, so I will explain to you what is happening. Are they given because, interviews? Because Let's start with that. Are they given interviews? We were previously experiencing this, almost, that's starting almost, to sound like a no. Well, let's just 90, let's just hone in here, Mr. Almost, Secretary. My time is is very limited. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I want to drive to some clarity here. But Senator, Are they, the Texas Monthly has reported that once illegal immigrants go on their phone and reserve their time to come to the border, once they use your concierge service that you've created for them, when they come, they are given no interviews. They are asked no questions about any vulnerabilities. They are simply released into the country. Is that happening? Uh, Senator, you are mistaken, and if I may explain. Are they given interviews? If I may explain, individuals who seek parole under our January 5th program for Cubans, Haitians, Nicaraguans, and Venezuelans are screened and vetted before they arrive at our border. That wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, they, they, go on an, they go on the phone, and they I, just reserve a time, and then they show up, and they're, not given, they're given nothing. Listen to this. Even immigration advocates are amazed about this. Here, also from the Texas Monthly, here's one immigration advocate whose first name is Orta. She says, that's the crazy part. Nothing in this new program requires you to actually seek asylum. Somehow... We've decided to punish those who arrive at the border without the app, who may be seeking asylum, but we just let in anybody who may or may not have any particular reason to seek asylum, so long as they've made an appointment on your Ticketmaster app. This seems crazy to me. Senator, it's a complete mischaracterization of the program that we announced and are implementing. So how many people have used, how many people have used the app then? That you are referring to. So if I can explain. How many people have used so, the app? So we have, um, we had a significant surge of Cubans. How many people Asian, have used the app? Nicaraguans and Venezuelans. Mr. Secretary, you're here to answer my questions. How many people have used the app? Uh, tens of thousands have sought to uh, make an appointment at the port of entry under our parole program. How, okay. Okay, good. How many have been admitted without an interview at the border? Um, well, uh, you are, uh, again, inserting a fact uh, that does not belong in your question. So if I can, I will get you the precise. <laughs> I'm, re I'm reading to you from public reports about how your own app works. You're just blanket deny. Actually, you're not quite denying it. You're saying that maybe we don't understand. Apparently, I don't understand. Texas Monthly doesn't understand. Immigration advocates don't understand. You're the only one who understands, yet you won't answer my question. How much did this cost to develop, by the way? Senator, I don't have the cost, but let me share with you a critical Well, will fact. you get it for us? Let me share with you a critical Will you fact. get us the cost of what it, to develop this app? Happily. Uh, did you use a, did you contract with a tech firm to develop it? Um, uh, Senator, we have seen a approximately... Did you contract 90, with a tech firm to develop it? We have seen an approximately 95% oh, decrease. Did you contract with a tech firm to develop it? Yes or no? 
Senator, this was led by U.S. Customs and Border Protection, our technical experts within the agency, and I certainly will get an answer to your question whether outside consultants were utilized so in the know. development process. You don't know. May I, may I explain to you, since you have a misunderstanding of the program, what it is and the impact, the positive impact it has had on encounters of these four populations in between the I just want to know why it is that you are allowing people to come to this border to make appointments, to not be interviewed, and then how many have just been released? Is it true, by the way, as the Texas Monthly reports, that they're simply released into the country on official parole? And get this, they're not given, according to their reporting, any kind of follow-up. Their court dates are in immigration courts, Texas Monthly reports, not even necessarily asylum trials. They're often general de deportation hearings where defendants can make arguments for remaining in the country. Is that true? That is um, a completely uh, mistaken understanding of how the immigration process works. That language is completely confusing and erroneous. <laughs> well, it is confusing. What's confusing is why anybody would think that an app like this to allow illegal immigrants to literally reserve a time to come to the border and then be ushered in without an interview, without follow-up, without tracking, is stunning. It's absolutely stunning. Let me ask you in my very short time remaining is, something is, else about Chinese is, nationals. I've, I've only got a minute left. That is false. Let, let me ask you about, about the, the Chinese nationals who we all saw coming over the border, busloads of them, and then being released in the American interior. What's the, what's the percentage increase of Chinese nationals who crossed the border this year, Mr. Secretary? Let's just focus on maybe the Rio Grande uh, Valley. The number, of, the, the number of Chinese nationals encountered at our southern border uh, has increased significantly. Do you know how much? Over the past. I don't have the precise percentage. I do. It's 900% it's just in the Rio Grande Valley sector. Are any, of, are any of these people who came in this bus, these Chinese nationals, members of the Chinese Communist Party? Um, Senator, if an individual presents a national security or public safety threat, we detain them during the pendency well, that's of their... Not but that's not what I asked. I asked if they're members of the CCP. During the pendency of their removal proceedings. Are, are any of these individuals members of the CCP? So I think there's indeed, about 70 who came on this if, bus. If indeed they are determined to be a national security threat or a threat to public safety, we detain them pending their removal proceedings. Were any of these individuals detained or were they released into the I don't, of the country? I don't have uh, awareness of that particular group of individuals. Um, and so you don't know if any of them were members of the CCP? Or actually you do know, you just won't say. I, I don't know from the photograph, Senator, to whom But surely you know about, about the folks who, you, you've read this report, you're the Secretary of Homeland Security, you're aware of these individuals. Were any of them members of the Chinese Communist Party coming into this country? Senator, you're providing me with a group of individuals without names, identities, or... So you're not familiar with this incident that was widely reported on at the southern border? Don't you think it's strange that we have busloads of Chinese nationals coming across our southern border? I'm asking you, from a, a hostile country, I'm asking you if they're members of the Chinese Communist Party, and you're, you, won't, you don't know, apparently, you won't say. We are very focused... Uh, on oh. all things with respect to the People's Republic of China. But you don't know any of the details. I plead exhaustion, Mr. Secretary. You have exhausted me. You have exhausted this panel. You have exhausted the patience of the American people. You should resign.